This is one of the coolest locations for any roller coaster in the world. Defiance is located at the top of Glenwood Caverns Adventure Park in Glenwood Springs, Colorado. The entire park sits at an elevation of over 7,000 feet, and you're going to be staring straight down 1,300 feet to the ground below. It's the park's newest attraction, opening up in 2022, and was manufactured by Gerslauer. It's one of their Eurofighter models. These rides are characterized by having a vertical lift and a beyond vertical drop. In this case, Defiance sends riders over 102.3 degree drop. That makes it one of the steepest in the world. It's such a cool looking ride, not a super long experience, but you ride it for the location, right? So this is going to be my full in-depth review of the attraction. I'm going to walk you through all the different elements, give some overall thoughts as well as compare it to a couple other similar rides of this type, and then we'll give it a score at the end of the video. So first, one of the things that I really just have to mention before we even get into the ride experience, this was an extremely difficult roller coaster to build during construction. Because of the ride's location on the cliff side, they had to spend a lot of time putting in those footers, hauling the track pieces up the back roads of Glenwood Caverns, parking those cranes in really precarious positions. It's a ride that if you were to take the same exact layout and put it on flat ground, would have taken like a third of the amount of time to build and cost way less. This is not a super long experience. You're really only looking at four different elements on this layout. So that's why it's tough to compare to one of these much larger Eurofighters. Because in reality, this ride was probably more expensive than those, even though those attractions are much bigger. This was an extremely ambitious project, but really paid off. I mean, what an iconic attraction to see as you're taking that gondola up to the top. It gave Glenwood Caverns that standout roller coaster that they didn't have prior to this. Now, when you exit the gondola, you're going to take a right, walk down the hill to the entrance of Defiance. The ride has its own little plot here the one thing it's really missing is a nice big entrance sign like this is literally it right here really forgettable and something that could have been done a lot better but i love this overall view that you get with the vertical lift and that final inversion coming into the brake run they even have a viewing platform right here so non-riders can watch the ride vehicle just coming in hot to the brakes now passengers will board one of two rows for the attraction so either the front or the back four seats across you have an over the shoulder restraint i think defiance would have been a lot better with lap bars i'll tell you why in a second as you dispatch out of the station right out in front of you is this amazing amazing view of Glenwood Springs. Like the ride experience hasn't even really started yet and that's already your view. It's fantastic. And as you approach this lift, at this point you probably realize that you're already decently high off the ground. The base of the station is at ground level, but as soon as you venture out, because of the cliff side, there's a big drop off there. So what that means is you only need to climb 75 feet in the air for your lift hill in order to have a 110 foot tall drop. And it's something that you really feel when you're on that attraction. This coaster feels high up there and it's pretty spooky. Before you know it, you're at the top and you start to crest over and you're going to slow down and it's so that you can get that mountain view. In my opinion, the drop is by far the best thing about this attraction. Everything else is just a bonus. You really feel that pull as you get thrown down underneath yourself. You're right up against the ground, hitting your max speed of 56 miles per hour before you rise up into what is really a twisted top hat. And it's so funny looking at this element from far away because from a distance, it looks like a vertical loop. But instead of flipping you upside down, you ride over the top of the track at its peak, twisting from one way to the other. It's a very fluid motion, very nice profiling at this element. You twist back down to the ground, and at this point, you enter the banana roll. And for me, this is easily the weakest part of the ride. Not because banana rolls are bad moments, but because this element specifically is pretty rough. I'm not sure what happened. Maybe it was an error during construction, something to do with the footers. It could be the profiling. Maybe it's just too sharp of a maneuver, but this is just not a very pleasant experience. The rough patches are specifically when you enter the banana roll and when you exit the banana roll. So that actual middle part right in between the inversions is fine. It's something that you really have to brace for, and those over-the-shoulder restraints make it so much worse because you could slam your head to the side. This is the primary reason why I say that Defiance would have been a lot better with a lap bar because then there's nothing to hit your head on. And it's really a shame that this element is not that good because it looks fantastic. And normally, I love banana rolls. That was one of my favorite parts of Takabisha. Now, I think where you sit can definitely play a part in how enjoyable this moment is to you. In my opinion, front right seat is the worst. And the general left side of the vehicle, whether you're in the front or the back, is the best. So for whatever reason, you can only ride this once. I would say personally, sit front row, left middle seat. 
That way you get the view and maybe a little less headbanging. But getting back to the layout, following that banana roll, you have one more element, you're back up against the ground and you roll into an inline twist straight into the brakes. And this moment is a lot of fun. I actually think it's a great finale. There is a little kink in the track though and as riders are coming to a stop, you can watch everyone's heads go right and then left. It's really funny. Check out some of these slow motion shots. You can really see it here. It's nowhere near as bad as the banana roll. And if you keep your head forward, then it's not that bad. I think it's kind of funny it still does not beat out the bottom of the drop of Saw the Ride. That is one of the roughest spots of any Eurofighter I've ever done. And watching everyone's heads get smashed into the restraint there is just nowhere near what Defiance has. Something a little odd about these bars are these are not your standard Gerslauer over-the-shoulder restraints. It's a one-of-a-kind only on this ride. Your shoulder harness is pushed away from your body, so it doesn't touch you. The only thing that really touches your body is the bottom of the restraint, which resembles a typical lap bar. The problem is that the sides are pushed so far out that it makes it awkward to position your head. If you were to keep it forward and prevent it from headbanging, you'll still hit your head, and vice versa. Now, Glenwood Caverns does have a solution that they'll be rolling out for this in the spring. We got to actually take a test ride on this. They've retrofitted the shoulder harness is to have these like cushion pads. Think of it like a pillow. So your head still moves side to side, but now you're not smashing up against the bar. I know for me, I was way more likely to re-ride the attraction if I was on the train that had these little pillows. Like if it's too late to put lap bars on the attraction, this is the next best thing. You still feel the roughness, but this time it doesn't hurt. And I hope that other parks that have a similar head banging problem on one of their coasters consider an option like this. It's a really simple, efficient, and cost conscious solution to increase guest comfort. I mentioned Saw the Ride earlier. That'd be fantastic there. Same with like Mystery Mine, Shell Razor. That ride would be a heck of a lot better with these. So I applaud Glenwood Caverns for thinking outside the box and coming up with something like this. So overall, Defiance is a fun time. The location is fantastic. Ride experience wise, most of it is great. I really like the other elements of Defiance, but the problem is there are only four elements, the drop, the top hat, the banana roll, and the inversion. So when one of those elements is not that great, that's 25% of the ride. If we're giving out letter grades in school, a 75% is a C. Luckily, Defiance gets extra credit for its location, so that makes this ride at least a B. But I just really wish I liked this element better because then I think my opinion of the attraction would be significantly improved. I enjoyed riding Defiance, but in my opinion, is it the best attraction here? No, it's not. I'd say the swing is way more rewritable and definitely scarier. But for its final score, I'm giving it a 7.5 out of 10. The big downsides, in my opinion, are the over-the-shoulder restraints, the banana roll, and the fact that there's only four moments. Again, I understand why it's there. From a cost perspective, if you're trying to make the most of your money, I get it. Now, if I were in charge of Glenwood Caverns, would I have purchased a Gerslauer Eurofighter? Well, probably not. At least, not immediately. It's a good choice, but I think there are other options out there that might have worked better. My guess is the Eurofighter was chosen because they wanted that iconic drop, and also Gerslauer came in at a good price. Eurofighters tend to be one of the cheaper thrill ride options compared to what other manufacturers offer. So when I compare it to other Eurofighters out there, I'd say this one is like middle of the pack. It's definitely memorable because of its location, but in terms of ride experience, there's definitely other ones out there that I prefer more, but still a great attraction to have here at Glenwood Caverns. I absolutely recommend coming out here to check it out. This is an incredible park that anyone can enjoy. Nature lovers, thrill seekers, there really is something here for everyone. And as far as small parks go, this is one of my favorites. So let me know down in the comments below if you've ridden Defiance at Glenwood Caverns, if you agree with the points that I brought up, if you think there's anything I missed, be sure to post all that down below and stay tuned for more here at Coaster Studios and I'll see you next time.